Chris Rosser. Chris Rosser is doing a lot of testing. Uh, and he tested the output power of the DJI uh, and Walksdale video transmitters and found some uh, extremely interesting I stuff. I think this is some of the most... Oh, didn't mean to talk, let Chris talk there. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's something I think a lot of us have known. Like, I've definitely discussed EIRP with other people, but uh, it's interesting to see all drawn out. Um, and then, um, you know, so there's two, two different levels to what's going on here. One is that... Uh, you know, if you don't know, basically, when you set your DJI device to 1,200 milliwatts or 700 milliwatts, you're not actually getting that number. Mm -hmm. Like on an analog VTX, you'd be getting you're getting that direct number value power output. Mm -hmm. um, but with digital uh, DJI Walk Snail, um, you're actually getting an EIRP, which is mm -hmm. a equivalent radiated power so essentially it's taking into account the antenna and then also array so like if you have things broadcasting the same signal they get compounded right uh, um so, the, so the eirp is the amount of power coming out of the antenna which includes the antenna gain the yes. uh, uh and any like ofdm stuff like because there's an additional like you know for instance if you have two antennas transmitting the same thing then you right. have another 3 db you know the conducted output power is the power coming out of the radio into the antenna, and since the antenna has gain, the the, the EIRP is higher. Yes. Yeah, and since they're doing yeah fancy stuff with the digital signal as well, you're also right. you know there's also changes there too. Um, but yeah, so if you didn't know that number is going to be lower than you expected it to be, uh, that's for sure. Um, so he ran through analog VTXs and showed the uh -huh. analog VTXs, and of course they're a and, little bit and, variance, but they're yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Blunty. They they have some variance, but they're pretty close, except like the thousand on a lot of these. But uh, you know they're pretty close to what they say they're going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then he goes through some of the DJI testing of the uh, V1 system. So this mm -hmm. is the DJI FPV air unit, and he goes through both antennas. You know, they're and, it looks like they're. Go ahead. And and what you see here, I mean, I'm putting charts up, and I see, you know everybody can read the charts. But what we see here is that at 1,200 milliwatts output power, the actual power coming into the antenna is only about, if I'm, my memory is correct, 250 milliwatts, which would surprise a lot of people. That's a lot lower number. Yes. Yep. And he's saying that basically they're you know adding both antennas, uh, the ERP, and then they're adding the antenna. DB, you know, mm -hmm. and then they're adding the, you know, like the extra gain and stuff. So, you know, the effective power out is what they're saying it is, or, pro or pretty similar, right. uh, at least in theory. They're just measuring in a different way than people who are used to analog VTX. And I would like to say, as someone who was an RF professional in my past life, talking about the radiated power versus the, uh, the, the other one, uh, some RF professional. I'm blanking on the conducted. other one. <laughs> the conducted power. Uh, that's not fundamentally dishonest. Uh, either one could be valid. You just would need to specify. And I'm not sure if DJI like intentionally misled us. I'm not sure if I'm even mad because like if you say, well, you're not putting out 1200 milliwatts, you're only putting out 250 milliwatts. The range is insane. Like I'm even right. more impressed in a way. To find out right. that DJI does what they do with only two, the equivalent of 250 milliwatts in, if we were measuring it the way we measure analog VTXs. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, well, I think Chris replied in his comments to somebody who was like, you know, doesn't this mean that people are going to be mad about their gear? And he's like, most of the time when I do these videos, people just find out like they're more happy about the gear they had because they realize what it's doing, you know? Right. Like, yeah, we're getting what we got already. We're just learning about how they're doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, so we've got that piece of data. We've got the DJI Air unit. He also tested the Vista um, on the V1 goggles. Um, and mm -hmm. then, uh, so, you know, we got pretty similar results there to the Air unit. Um, mm -hmm. um, but however, I think a couple different interesting things. Um, nope. One, well, we could see the Walksdale avatar. Yeah, if you Sorry, go to which the one do you thing. want? Which one do you want? Let's go Walksdale Avatar. Yep. It's yep. pretty similar to the DJI, which we kind of expected it would be. But it the looks V1. like they were cloning the V1. They were kind of doing the same idea. Um, however, yeah, if you look at the Avatar V2 VTX mm -hmm. um, and the 1S Lite, uh, you can see that they have basically changed the way they're displaying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, V1, before, if you look, yeah, if you look back, 
Yeah, so let's look at V1 real quick. And mm -hmm. then if you see, like, so on the left-hand side, we can see 25 milliwatt is blue, but it's at the 10 line, right? Yeah. And then we've got 200 milliwatt is the orange, and it's under 100, mm -hmm. right? And this is what DJI was doing, too, because they're doing right. EIRP. They're, they're, right. They're giving you the total power out, radiated power. So then if you go down, if you go to the V2 system, mm -hmm. we can see on the V2 side that now suddenly that 25 milliwatt line is up real close to 25 milliwatts. Yeah. And that 200 and that 200 milliwatt line is getting up towards 200 milliwatts. But then the system caps out and that's the interesting part. That goes to RC Ritter's question, is there headroom to pump a Vista to an actual 1200 milliwatts? And what we're seeing at least with the Waxnail V2 system is apparently not because when you well, get to 500 milliwatts, you're at 250ish milliwatts and you just stay there. Yeah, well, I know that from what I was told, all these Skyworks PAs are in the same series, and mm -hmm. they're all 27 dB. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't actually do any more than 27 dB on these PAs, and that's if they can do full output. Like, they that's don't the have amplifier. 30 dB or 33 dB uh, the right. amplifier in there to get more power out. So 500 milliwatts is actually the technical, like, most power out of the PA, as far as I'm aware. Right. And, and... Yeah. Uh, so, so if you've got the Waxnail V2 system, what Chris Rosser is saying is that the 700, 1000 and 1200 milliwatt setting have no effect that you at 500 milliwatts, right. you're already at max power and increasing it beyond that isn't going to give you better performance. Yeah. That's what, yeah. His testing showed that, you know, uh, yeah, they didn't change when he did those higher settings because they're changing the way they're scaling and you mm -hmm. get to that cap sooner. Whereas on the V1 system, it was you still had the same max power. The max power didn't change. It's just now, uh, with the V1 system, you had these gradations reaching to the max power, which was never 1,200 milliwatts. It was, well, it's 1,200 milliwatts coming out of the antenna, but 250-ish but, uh, or 500-ish milliwatts coming into yeah. the antenna. So let's jump over now, and let's look okay. at the Vista on the goggles, too. So that's going to be All near right. the end. We're going to jump down to that one. Let's um, see here. So HD that'll be the zero. one after that. Yeah, so let's go By to the, DJI, yeah, go DJI O3, Vista. Is this yeah, where so you real be? quick, we'll look. At, yeah, Vista on O3 firmware here. So mm -hmm. we're comparing the Vista here, O3 on the left, to the DJI O3 antenna on the right, but also the Vista data on the left has the V1 data inside of it. You can see at the bottom there, V1 1200 and V1 500. I see. So when we're looking, he's comparing the max outlet, the V1 1200, that you could get on the V1 goggles with the Vista to the FCC armed value, which is the highest value you can get on the O3 firmware Vista that's on the goggles too, because it's a mm. new firmware and a new way they're running it. Mm -hmm. And then he also compares that, if you look at those numbers, the yellow numbers are the FCC armed, which is the max output power on the goggles too. Yeah. It yeah. sure does look a lot like the DJI O3 does on the goggles too. Mm -hmm. So his, he suggests in the video, I mean, he doesn't say it's happening, but he suggests in the video that it's possible that DJI downrated the Vista because, hey, it was higher power on the other firmware, mm -hmm. and now it's showing a lower power. So doesn't that mean that they probably down did something to the Vista firmware? And his suggestion is that they did it to match the O3 and not make the O3 look bad. I, I mean, that's certainly plausible. Like, I'm not going to... But just on principle, I would throw out... Like, we, what if the Vista simply like can't handle something something about the signal modulation changed that makes the yep. vista work harder we know that the o3 firmware is doing fundamentally different things in some ways we don't know we don't know what they are i don't know what they are but you could argue that it, it generates more heat to do the same amount of work for some reason and that's why they turned the output power down i mean it doesn't have to be that there was something scummy going on where they didn't want the vista to get better range than the o3 although it could have been yeah. that yeah and like i said people are welcome to correct me but as far as i know it is the same skywork series mm -hmm. in those set in the o3 and the vista so you're talking theory, about the, the amplifier not the soc the PAs. though yeah 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 the pa so the you power would think if, if the yeah if the pas are the same and o3 had to run this low then vista would also have to run this low on the same thing but i yeah. think some people are speculating that like Maybe it's just that O3 was getting too hot and couldn't run fast enough, and now it's right. like they're down downgrading the Vista to match it so they don't make it look better. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's a lot of speculation when we right. know that the code changed completely um, between the revisions. And I don't. I think it makes just as much sense to say, yeah, they put O3 code on it and it matches the O3 power. That makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. So. So the takeaway is, 
that when DJI says 1200 milliwatts or Walksnail says 1200 milliwatts or HD zero, we didn't go into that here, but the HD zero does the same thing. When they say 1200 milliwatts, it doesn't mean the same thing as an analog VTX that's at 1200 milliwatts. It's, it's a, they're, they're talking, they're measuring things. It's like with car, you know what it's like, Blunty? It's, you know, I know exactly what it's like. It's like with cars, how they measure horsepower and you can measure horsepower at the crank or at the wheel. That's exactly what it's like. These guys are measuring horsepower at the crank not at the wheel. Everybody else is, or no, the other way around. They're measuring it at the wheel, not at the crank. And that's that's in some ways better. Um, but it's misleading or confusing. But who gives a crap? Because the performance of the systems is amazing. And, yep. and frankly, in a unit this size, the ability to pump one watt is pretty challenging anyway. So. Yep. Um, all right. The one Thank other you, thing. Chris. Yeah. We should mention. So a lot of these, in a lot of these cases, we've seen that, um, you know, let's go back to that video because in, in a lot of these cases, we've seen that as you go down the chart, the first channel is going to be, mm -hmm. um, you know, the the higher output power, and then as you go down, most of them have been designed so that the mm -hmm. higher channels are a lower output power relative to each one. Like if you, you say design, the same number. Is that you think yeah. that's intentional, or you think that's just a characteristic of the amplifier? Maybe, maybe it's not, but I know like on antennas, right? You pick a spot, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's yeah. not correct. But my understanding with antennas well, you, is you yeah. can pick, you can kind of pick where your good spot is and you're working yeah. out from the good Fair. spot. Fair. So I wonder if that's the case with these designs or not. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Other people suggested maybe because R1, R2, like those are Wi-Fi that they're getting more power on those to counteract Wi-Fi or something. I'm not sure if that's the case. But anyway, I think it's interesting to look at on that video. If you look at HD zeros numbers, they are vastly different between those mm. output powers, such that you are at a disadvantage, I would think, in a race situation by running a high channel. Um, it's like mm. insanely large. Yeah. So what we're seeing uh, with HD0 is that on race one, I wish there were numbers here. I can't really, I wish there were numbers. Uh, one, well, he, two, so he, three, his, four, five. His goal five. is to have the bars. Yeah, yeah. So he's saying basically it's like, you know, 1.8x to 2x the range loss is how he's yeah. doing it. Um, significant power degradation as you go to the higher channels. I always run race eight because it avoids Wi-Fi and I have Wi-Fi at my house. Maybe that, yeah. maybe that's why my HD zero doesn't get the same range that other people. Oh my God, Blinty, what if we just crack the code? I mean, it I seems to be the case. Because in there, the high power on that VTX is the same as the low power at race one. I always run race eight at my house because I have Wi-Fi and I don't want to interfere. Because once upon a freaking time, I tested right. HD zero on uh, on a different channel and there were sparkles and people said, that's your Wi-Fi interfering. And they were right. And they, I said, okay, that's fair. I took that video down. I redid the test. And ever since then, I have always used race eight whenever I test any video transmitter, but especially HD zero. And, um, but the, apparently that means that also I'm getting much less range than people who are not on race eight. And maybe that finally explains why people say, I don't know why Bard will get such bad results. To be fair, I, I use race eight on every other video transmitter too. So it's like, it's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I have a piece of news related to Chris Rosser. I'm going to just throw it out there. Uh, mm. I, you know, Chris Rosser is doing uh, battery testing. Yes. He well, was asking uh, for donations for a nice battery machine. Yeah. Well, I have one of those. I'm going to loan it to him uh, for the for the foreseeable future. Uh, we're actually in the process. It's going to go back to West Mountain. So for people who don't know, years ago, I GoFundMe like four thousand dollars for a battery testing machine, uh, and uh, uh, I did battery testing for a while. Uh, but I didn't do as much battery testing as perhaps I would have liked to or other people would have liked to. And it's kind of tapered off. Uh, the last one I did was the folded cell battery test that involved that machine. Well, but I don't, Cronus, how, yeah. I was gonna say, I don't know how deep you want to go into it, but I mean, if you think about it, it's a lot of money. You know, like it, it's just it's a general, lot of money. The whole, you know, yeah. Battery testing, uh, you know, especially if you want to do it right, it just costs a ton of money, not just the machine. Yeah. It's a well, lot it has of batteries. To, you have yeah. to dissipate this machine. The, the The reason it was four grand was I needed. It's got these two kilowatt amplifiers. Uh, they don't amplify the signal. Um, what they do is they they 
discharge at up to two kilowatts. They can so there's this giant heat sinks with fans on them, but you have to very precisely measure the current going through them, and that's the part where the amplifier comes into play. Um, anyway, the machine can dissipate up to two kilowatts and measure current very precisely. And uh, uh, so when Chris was trying to raise money for a battery test machine, I was like, all yeah. right, dude, why don't I send you mine? Since I'm not using it very much, and you'll probably get a lot of use out of it. Anyway, uh, so it's going back to West Mountain. Uh, that's the manufacturer. They're going to recalibrate it just because it's been a while since they since it's been in the field. He's got some modifications he's asked them to do to it, which sound very cool. I'll let him talk about those when he's ready. And then it's going to be shipped from West Mountain to Chris in the UK. And we'll see what he does with it. Uh, but uh, for those who are wondering, whatever happened to Bardwell's battery test machine? Well, uh, I have sent it to a good home. Yeah. Um, okay. Not officially part of the news, 